Hello grade 10s, welcome to this lesson in this series on comparing physical and chemical change. Today we will investigate the law of conservation of mass or matter when chemical and physical changes take place. Let's cross over to Diyasha to give us a brief background to this important law. We'll start this lesson by going back to the time of a man who overthrew a lot of old thinking in chemistry. This man was Antoine Lavoisier. Lavoisier worked for a private company that collected taxes for the French government at a time of great political unrest in France. But chemistry was his passion. Lavoisier was sentenced to death by guillotine because of his involvement in tax collection. His execution was a tragedy for the development of people's understanding of chemistry. One of his colleagues said after his death, it took them only an instant to cut off that head, and a hundred years may not produce another like it. Lavoisier, with the help of his wife, Marie Anne, decomposed and synthesized many different substances. He did many experiments very carefully and collected very accurate and precise data. Lavoisier showed that the quantity to take notice of when investigating changes is the macroscopic property of mass. We measured mass too when we explored the changes involved in extracting copper from malachite. But we did it in a slightly different way to Lavoisier. In this lesson, we will measure mass during some of the changes we have seen in earlier lessons in much the same way as Antoine and Marie-Anne Lavoisier did. In today's lesson, we will verify the law of conservation of mass and explain this law by illustrating the conservation of atoms in a chemical reaction. Let's kick off our investigation into the law of conservation of mass by crossing over to Diyasha. Malachite or copper carbonate breaks down into simpler substances upon heating in an open system and loses mass. We explained that this missing mass was carbon dioxide, a gas, which was let into the air. Lavoisier trapped this gas when he explored chemical changes. Let's do the same thing. Let's heat pure copper carbonate and trap the gas before it escapes. Hi there, have a look at the apparatus I've set up here. I've got some copper carbonate in this test tube and I'm going to seal the test tube with this stopper, tightly sealed. I've got some plastic tubing connected to a syringe. No gas can escape from this. It is a closed system. I'm now going to find the mass of the whole system by placing it on the triple beam balance. I found that the mass of this system is exactly 46,5 grams. Take note that the plunger is exactly on the 5 milliliter mark. Now watch what happens when I heat up the copper carbonate. The copper carbonate decomposes to form copper oxide plus carbon dioxide. Now look at the plunger. Can you see that it has moved out? The expanding carbon dioxide has pushed the plunger out. Now let's measure the mass of the system and it hasn't changed. The final mass of the system is still 46,5 grams. Do you remember the lesson on types of chemical change? When the malachite was heated, it lost mass. But in this demonstration, the mass remained unchanged. Let's cross over to Diyasha to explain these observations. The copper carbonate lost mass on heating, but that's because we let the carbon dioxide escape from the test tube. This time, the carbon dioxide stays inside our apparatus. So, from this experiment, we can conclude that the mass of the reactants before heating is the same as the mass of the products after heating. Decomposing copper carbonate changes the copper carbonate, but decomposing copper carbonate does not destroy matter. Lavoisier showed that whenever mass seems to be gained by or lost from open systems, a gas is either taken from the air or given off into the air. Lavoisier described his findings to state a law, and this is a translation of the very words he used. 
we must lay it down as an incontestable axiom that in all the operation of art and nature nothing is created an equal quantity of matter exists both before and after the experiment in less formal language this means that it is impossible to create matter and it is impossible to destroy matter during chemical change we measured mass in all of our experiments just like Lavoisier did mass is a macroscopic property but now we can go further than Lavoisier did or had time to in his shortened life we can explain our macroscopic properties at a microscopic level matter has mass but matter is made of atoms so atoms must have mass if mass is conserved then atoms must be conserved too this means that the bonds holding copper carbon and oxygen in copper carbonate break during decomposition new bonds form to give new substances with the same number of atoms sometimes it is difficult to accept that the quantity of matter and hence the number of atoms is the same before and after a change sometimes things around us just seem to disappear take a candle for instance it gets shorter and shorter as it burns true some of the wax melts and runs down the candle but when the candle stops burning there's much less wax left in the saucer than there was in the candle but look what happens if we burn this candle in the air under a closed flask on the pan of our balance we can see the candle getting shorter and shorter but as you can see the mass reading on the balance does not change as the candle burns this shows us once again that the total mass of the candle and the air in the flask is the same before, during and after the chemical change involved in the burning. The products of the chemical change, the carbon dioxide and water vapor, are trapped inside the flask. They cannot escape into the air. So, matter is not destroyed during this change even though it seems to be. The mass of the wax plus the air before burning is the same as the mass of the gases formed and the unused air after the candle finishes burning. Do you remember this experiment we conducted in lesson 2? We took shiny magnesium metal and burnt it in oxygen. It burnt with a bright white flame and formed a white powder. Let's ask the Asha to explain what happens at a microscopic level. At a microscopic level, we interpret this to mean that the same number of atoms become rearranged in different ways to form products. This rearrangement involves bond breaking and bond formation. Mass doesn't change during this rearrangement. So we can be sure that the number of atoms before the change is the same as the number of atoms after the change. This concept is so important that we will look at another example. Remember the experiment we did to decompose hydrogen peroxide? In this experiment, hydrogen peroxide was placed in a flask with magnesium oxide and heated. The oxygen gas was collected by the downward displacement of water. Microscopically, we saw that two hydrogen peroxide molecules decomposed to form one oxygen molecule and two hydrogen molecules. As you can see, one hydrogen peroxide molecule contains two oxygen atoms and two hydrogen atoms. But in this reaction, two hydrogen peroxide molecules decompose. As hydrogen peroxide decomposes, it forms two water molecules and one molecule of oxygen gas. An oxygen molecule is made up of two oxygen atoms. And one water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. However, when hydrogen peroxide decomposes, it forms two molecules of water. Let's work out the mass of the reactant using relative atomic mass. Hydrogen atoms have a mass of 1 AMU. Oxygen has a mass of 16 AMU. The relative mass of one hydrogen peroxide molecule is 1 times 2, since each molecule has two hydrogen atoms plus 16 times 2, since it also has two oxygen atoms. So the mass of one hydrogen peroxide molecule is 34 AMU. There are two hydrogen peroxide molecules, so the total mass is 68 AMU. Now let's look at the products. The relative mass of one oxygen molecule is 2 times 16 since one molecule has two oxygen atoms, so the mass is 32 AMU. 
The relative mass of one water molecule is two times one, since it has two hydrogen atoms, plus 16, since it has one oxygen atom. The relative mass of water is 18 AMU. But during the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, two water molecules form. So the total mass of water formed is 18 times 2, which is 36 AMU. So the total mass of products is 32 AMU for the oxygen molecule and 36 AMU for the water molecule. So the total relative mass of products is 32 AMU plus 36 AMU. The total mass is 68 AMU. The mass of hydrogen peroxide that decomposes is the same as the mass of products formed. So we can see that the mass is conserved. Now let's look at the atoms. Do you see that there are two oxygen atoms in each hydrogen peroxide molecule? So on the reactant side, we have four oxygen atoms in total. These atoms rearrange when hydrogen peroxide decomposes and one atom of oxygen from each peroxide molecule combine to form oxygen gas. The other two form part of the water molecules. There are also two hydrogen atoms in each hydrogen peroxide molecule. So on the reactant side, we have four hydrogen atoms in total. These atoms rearrange when hydrogen peroxide decomposes and the hydrogen atoms combine with oxygen atoms to form water molecules. Let's summarize all this information in a table. Two molecules of hydrogen peroxide decomposed to form a total of three molecules. One molecule of oxygen and two molecules of water. There are four atoms of oxygen and four atoms of hydrogen in two peroxide molecules. And with the products, there are four hydrogen atoms and four oxygen atoms. The relative mass of the reactants is the same as the relative mass of the products. So from the table, we can see that mass is conserved during a chemical change, but the number of molecules may change. In the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, for every two molecules of hydrogen peroxide that decomposes, three molecules are formed, two water molecules and one oxygen molecule. Mass is conserved because the number of atoms is conserved during the reaction. Let's cross over to Diyasha to see what happens to mass in a physical change. All the changes that we have looked at so far have been chemical changes. Now let's see if mass is conserved during physical changes too. The mass of the ice and the beaker is 68,42 grams. If I put the beaker in some hot water, the ice melts. Now I first have to dry the outside of the beaker before I can measure the mass again. What do you expect that we will find? The mass of the beaker and its content doesn't change. It's still 68,42 grams. Melting 50 grams of ice will give us 50 grams of water. When ice containing any number of water molecules melts, that same number of water molecules becomes rearranged to form water. Melting ice doesn't destroy water molecules. The law of conservation of mass, and hence conservation of atoms, is true for all physical and chemical changes. When you learn about how to do chemical calculations, you will find out just how useful the law of conservation of mass is. But let's get a sneak peek now. Imagine you react 40 grams of copper with 10 grams of oxygen. What mass of product would you expect to find? We start by writing a word equation to represent the change. This is copper plus oxygen gives copper oxide. Copper and oxygen are the reactants and copper oxide is the product. This equation enables us to identify the reactants and the product. The law of conservation of mass tells us that the mass of the copper plus the mass of the oxygen equals the mass of the copper oxide. The mass of the product is thus 50 grams. In this lesson, we have seen a very important chemical law. In both physical and chemical changes, mass is conserved. You can practice using the law of conservation of mass in the task video and visit the Mindset website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Hopefully you have gained a lot from this series on comparing physical and chemical change. Goodbye.